Welcome to Devotionals on the Go. My name is Kelly Wenner, and I'm the founder and creator of Soul Strength Fit. If you think you don't have time to dive into God's Word, then this podcast is for you. These few moments will not only allow you to hear the Word of God, but to reflect on it and apply it to your life. Listen, reflect, and grow on the go. This time is for you. Our opening reading is Philippians 2, 12 through 18, New Living Translation. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. But I will rejoice, even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice, and I will share your joy. In the NIV version of this passage, Paul calls the Philippians to continue to work out their salvation. This may initially sound like he is suggesting that salvation comes by works rather than by saving grace, but this couldn't be farther from the truth. Listen again to verses 12 through 13. What key words do you see that make it clear that salvation does not come through works? Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. What does Paul say about how a person receives salvation? Listen to what he wrote in Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved.
get a better understanding of what Paul means to work out your salvation, listen to James 2, 14 to 26. What is the connection between faith and works? What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go, keep in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. According to these verses, what is the source of your motivation to work out your salvation? What words make this clear to you? And how is this encouraging to you? Paul calls the Philippians to do everything without grumbling or arguing. What specific reason does he give for this? Listen again. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. The absence of grumbling, complaining, and arguing can be a testifying mark of Christians, of those who have put their trust in God and his plans. God takes the sin of grumbling seriously. As you grow in your ability to do everything without grumbling or arguing, how might this benefit your relationship with others, at home, at work, or in your community? Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Paul taps into rich biblical language regarding light in this verse. We read in Isaiah 49, 6. He says, It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the family groups of Jacob and to bring back those of Israel I have kept safe. I will also make you a light to the nations, so that men over all the earth can be saved from the punishment of their sins. And what did Jesus tell his disciples regarding being a light to others? Listen to this portion from the book of Matthew. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. 
No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. As lights for God, we are part of his amazing plan of bringing salvation to all. This is a lifelong journey, not something that is immediately achieved. This process of becoming children of God that shine in this world must involve our will, our heart, and our actions. It's not simply a matter of learning to bite our tongue or hold back grumbling. It's a matter of allowing our hearts to be changed. There is a cause and effect relationship between our attitudes and behavior. Wrong attitudes bring forth polluted behavior, making it impossible to be pure. But God wants his children to be blameless, effectively living as lights to others in this world. You are called to be a light to others. You are called to shine among others as brightly as a star in the sky. What are some actions that would result in your shining more brightly for Christ? What are some specific action steps you could take in the week ahead to be a light for others? Thanks for listening to Devotionals on the Go your place to listen, reflect, and grow. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an on-the-go devotional. And I'd love to connect. Check me out at soulstrengthfit.com. I look forward to digging into God's Word with you next time. Bye for now.